Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is Moorlander EDC. It's a horrible day outside today and again starting in the most possibly British way to start any conversation off and that is by talking about the weather. It is horrible outside so we're back inside for the day because cameras just don't like getting wet. But what we are here today to look at is the Bond, the Leatherman Bond. Um, I had to do that, sorry, I had to do that. There was no way I was not going to do that. Um, so, the Leatherman Bond. Leatherman have started to make tools that are a wee bit more friendly outside of the US. Um, and, they've, I mean, as far as new tools are concerned, when was the last load of tools that they created? The last load of tools that came out was the free range, which was what, three, maybe four years ago? Um, so Leatherman recently did the Bond and I believe the Curl to more of a worldwide audience and some of the features that they've put on here or maybe some of the features that they've removed from here. So what I'll do is I'll turn the camera on so we can take a closer look at the Bond whilst I'm doing that. If you'd like to hit the like button, that would be amazing. I'm trying to hit 10 million subscribers by the end of 2022. If you'd like to subscribe, that would be absolutely amazing. But for now, let's turn the camera around and take a closer look at the Bond. Okay, so here we have it in the box. Um, I don't usually do unboxings, you know, but you know, I, I thought um, you, know, you get some instructions in the box. Um, I think this box has been repurposed. I definitely think it's been repurposed, mainly because the instructions show another model. And when it fits in there, you can definitely see you know, this is a similar shape to another model. Um, but, you know, I, I certainly don't mind that. I don't, don't hold that against them. Um, what you also get in the box is one of these nice nylon sheaths, which do a, a reasonably good job. Um, from what I understand and what I remember, you can also get leather versions of these. Um, they're sold separately. Oops, pick that back up. I think they also do. They also do a clip for this. Um, it has a removable clip, but it, it doesn't come as standard with the removable clip. So here is the bond itself. Um, I think I've got some reasonably good light in here. So although it does seem to keep wanting to move off of that. Um, but with the Bond, there are some nice lines on here. Um, rather than, I mean, it, it, it's all made from folded steel. Um, but rather than just having these flat lines or flat sides, you can see that there are different folds and bends in here. And they've also added it so it's a nice feature that rather than just folding and bending here from the side. There's a two or three millimeter um, indent before it then rises up. I think as far as Leatherman's go, this is possibly one of the nicer looking Leatherman's. And I suppose it's really strange to talk about Leatherman's as far as uh, aesthetics are concerned, but I, I certainly feel that the Bond definitely has a nicer aesthetic. Um, as far as you know, recent tools, the Bond, the, well, there's Bond and the Curl are the two most recent tools that Leatherman have, have produced before that was their free range, which I still need to pick up actually. I certainly definitely need to pick those up so I can make some content on them. Um, but these lines really, uh, for me, it gives it almost like, a, like an old fashioned, when you think of those old um, bonnets on cars and flared, um, wheel arches, that sort of thing. Um, certainly, yeah, I, I quite like the aesthetic on this. Now, as far as what this is, is possibly the most similar to, this harks back to the likes of the rebar, which was, which as if I believe was uh, Leatherman's first multi tool. Um, and the way in which this is designed, I'm guessing, must have took um, some inspiration from that in the way that it's laid out. Now, as I usually do, I know, I know I'm talking a lot more about the tool uh, so far, but what we'll do is we'll have a look at some measurements, we'll have a look at some materials, and then we'll actually get into the features themselves. 
So as far as the measurements are concerned, from the end to the end when it is closed like this, it comes in at 100 millimeters. When it is open, so to open it, I mean, it really does use that standard um, multi-tool opening that we've just kind of come to expect from Leatherman and really other multi-tool manufacturers out there. But when it's open, so from the, the center point f between these to the end comes in at 160 millimeters. When we're closed, so we've got a couple of widths uh, widths and depths here. Um, the width at the largest point, which is actually here, it does taper down slightly towards the end of these handles. So the widest width that we have is 30 millimeters, and the depth when we turn it on the side just comes in at, ooh, what was it now, uh, 15 millimeters. Sorry, I just couldn't see my notes there for a second. So in your hand, it actually feels really, really nice. As far as ergonomics are concerned, I think the way that they've styled this has certainly helped with ergonomics. So all of these rolled corners are just, there's no sort of right angles to them. They're all completely rolled and all feel really nice in the hand. But there's some extra details that they've gone into as far as the, the rolling of this steel. So when, it, when it's opened and when I open it like this, oh, so we're just going to focus again. When when this is opened, it's also rolled in on the inside here as well, so that as it's as it's used, there's there's no sort of hot points hot points on your fingers at all. So it's actually really nice to use. Um, and again, I think when I when I talk about this being um, a good looking or you know aesthetically pleasing tool, um, it's certainly where 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 the where that comes from. Construction wise, this is all from the 420 HC stainless steel um, and it has a very nice feel to it. There's a different in, there is a slight difference in finishes. So um, a lot of the, a lot of the tools, especially when you look at the ply here, it has that brushed finish. Um, but when we look at some of the tools, you'll be able to see, hopefully you'll be able to pick this up, but it has more of a satin beaded finish to it. So there's, there's a little bit of a variance in the finishes on each of the tools, but you know, they're, they're all made with a, a reasonably decent steel. When we look at the price with this, I'm probably jumping ahead. So actually, let's, jump, let's talk about the price. As far as Leathermans are concerned, I think one of the, the, the huge selling points for this Leatherman is the fact that you can pick this up between, well, I think when it first came out, it was 60 pounds. Um, but looking around today, you can, I can see that they vary between 50 to 55 pounds to pick this up. Here in the UK for a Leatherman, generally if you want a decent one, you're looking at around the 100 pounds mark. Uh, so to be able to pick one up with the tools that you have in this from a recognized brand like Leatherman and still be able to pick it up for 50 pounds, I think it's just about right. And I think a lot of that comes down to the decisions in the steel and, and some of the other tools that they've made on this. Now getting into the tools themselves, we'll, we'll start, actually, no, we'll start with it closed because the main reason that we will start with it closed is because hopefully you'll be able to see that this is a, um, it has to be a two hand operation tool because all of the tools are within each of the handles. There are no tools that you can access from the outside. I mean, kind of. On the back here, hopefully you'll be able to see that we have some metric and we have some imperial measurements. So when these are opened out like this, these can be used to measure from between one to 20 centimeters or eight inches. So, I mean, do you, would you really call, I suppose, if we're looking at, is this a tool? Then yes, strictly speaking, it's a tool, um, but you know, splitting hairs on that one but anyway all of the rest of the tools are all concealed within here now for me I think with a with a Leatherman and correct I'd, I'd certainly love to hear your thoughts on this but I find with Leathermans Leathermans fall kind of into two camps you have Leathermans that are designed for tradesmen for farmers for people that need to be able to use a tool at a pinch now if you're a plumber then you've always got a tool that you can use to um i don't know take apart a tap or I don't, you can tell i'm not a plumber um so 
to have something like this, it's a tool that, you know, you've got something in your hand that's just about to fall off and you need to grab another tool to do something quickly to it, which Leatherman, especially when they released their free range, they really sold on the fact that all of the tools can be accessed with one hand. You can, I suppose, really, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can access this with one hand, but it's all quite difficult. So I don't really think that this is designed for a secondary tool more towards a tradesperson. This is really more towards the hobbyist or the enthusiast that has the time to be able to go, okay, I need this and I've got two hands and I can open this. Um, which for some may possibly be a downside for this. Um, for others, you might not particularly mind. You're not the type of person that would have to be in a situation to have to need a tool that quickly. For me, certainly in my line of work, I, I don't work as a tradesman. So I think as a hobbyist, as an, as an enthusiast, then it's okay for me to have all of these tools in here. It is a bit of an imposition sometimes though that you have to, even just to be able to use the knife on this, you have to open one of the sides and then get the knife out to then, uh, I mean, no one would ever use it like that just because it looks weird. Um, but you have to you have to open at least one of the sides to be able to get the knife out. Now, might as well start, actually no, let's, let's start as I meant to go on. So let's talk about as it's opened, the vast majority of tools like this have some pliers on the end. The pliers are reasonably decent on these. I'm not a massive expert on Leatherman's. Now, I definitely recommend when you've finished watching this piece of content, obviously because you're gonna, you're gonna wanna see more from me, definitely check out Max Level EDC. Now, Dom on Max Level EDC has an absolutely encyclopedic knowledge of Leatherman's and the heads and all of the tools on there. Um, he's definitely got a lot of information about the different types of heads. Now, I guess this would be a light to medium use style head and the fact that it's not as large, it's not as meaty as some of the other Leatherman tools that are out there. You have some small needle nose pliers at the end, um, which then widen out where you then have some grip pliers. In here, you have a wire cutter and some wire strippers if you choose to use those. Some of this also harkens back to, as I was saying about the price range with this, some of the larger, um, some of the larger tools like the Surge, you're able to change the wire cutters in there to be able to save on some of that. Then you know this is the these don't have uh, replaceable wire cutters, which again I think this is more headed towards a hobbyist or an enthusiast because they would get light to medium use rather than somebody that would be you know using that tool and, and really would need to have that tool to um to be able to do their day-to-day -day job now i'll go through each of the different sides of the um of the handle so on this first side um now as far as recesses are concerned all of the other tools are handled from from the inside and they all have nail necks that you can get to them um the knife on this you hopefully you'll be able to see that there's a cut out there um so it's, it's not as difficult to be able to remember where the knife is because you have this um, dedicated recess to be able to pull the knife out. There is a, a thumb nick in there. There's, there's a strange thing with the tension with some of these tools as well. So the tension, when, when they're in, they, they kind of freely move for, for this small angle. It's also the same on this side as well. Whereas on this side, that angle is quite, quite a bit larger. So they, they kind of come out to here and they, they, they can sometimes rattle around a bit. And then when they get to here, there's some resistance where, where, you, where you then pull it out. It's a shame that whatever the spring is on here doesn't have a, have a, better, a better hold of those. But the knife, when this opens out, now as I mentioned before, there, there's, there's a few things on this that make this great for the more wider worldwide audience um, and that is that this is a slip joint there is a, a detent, detent spring here on the back with a notch in the knife that just keeps that in place the knife itself comes in at 66 millimeters now when we're talking about knife lengths here in the uk it's important that we talk about the cutting edge so that's from here from uh, from the ricasso through the belly to the tip 
comes in at 66 millimeters. Plus, given the fact that this is a slip joint, makes this one of, if not the first, well, no, the first large sized um, multi tools from Leatherman that, that has a slip joint on there. The finish to the knife is is a, a, a beaded satin finish. Sorry about that. The dog's just sat next to me and decided to burp. Um, and it has a nice uh, hollow grind on there. The grind, the actual cutting edge grind, um, on this side, it is okay and it is reasonably uh, equal throughout. This side is a bit sloppy i must say um I, I kind of expect a little bit more from leatherman on this um it goes from maybe two millimeters on the grind down to maybe a millimeter there and then when it goes round the tip from to the from the belly to the tip it drops down to about a millimeter again um it's a bit sloppy to be fair but you know it's something that you can easily correct yourself um but I, I certainly expect a little bit more from, from Leatherman on that one. Even with the price, um, it's still the same people grinding these knives. They don't just go, well, you know, this knife is only £50, so I'm only going to put £50 worth of uh, grind into it. Um, the detent spring on the back does a very, very good job of holding that in place so that it's not going to close um, on you while it's in there. Now, I haven't shown you this, but when we look at the, the, the flares, you know, I mentioned these flares out. So the flares aren't equal on either side. It has an asymmetrical look to it. The flare on this side flares out quite a bit more. And that's because on this side, on, on each of these tools, on here, it's here, it has a longer tool for, for the, the, the head to fit into. So when this closes, if I close it up like that, you'll be able to see um, that these longer tools go down the side of that and that's what this additional flare is. If there was anything that I could change about that, in fact, we'll, we'll get onto that bit, but I'd, I'd actually prefer to see a flare on both sides because I think that they'd be able to add more tools into this and I think it's a real shame that they didn't do that. Uh, but getting back to the knife itself, the other two tools that are in here that you get out with the little thumb neck, there is a... Um, a can opener which is you know it's quite nice uh, and then there is a Phillips screwdriver there as well uh, and that I mean that's it for that side which I think is a shame if they had have had this additional flare I think they could have fit at least another tool in there which is one of the major downsides about this knife uh, about this tool itself now I flip it over so on this side, which is the which is the longer side, this is the side that has that additional, or at least the wider flare on there. There is a nice uh, file. Now the file itself is actually a really really nice file. It's actually quite aggressive, which uh, you know, as far as files go, an aggressive file is definitely what you want to look at. Each of the sides um, has the teeth on there, and then this bottom edge here also has the teeth on as well. Across the back, it has it, but the strange thing with this, as it's closed, so you have this rounded edge here, which makes, certainly for the ergonomics on this, um, makes it nice to use, but it, it, it sits proud. It actually sits above um, the, the edge on there. So if you're using this, I mean, I, 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 in testing this and then using it, I, I certainly haven't, Although, I know that I'm looking for it, so I feel it. And you never really put your fingers in there. Um, and there's two sides, so if you did find that one was certainly a hot spot, you can flick, flip it over so that you can use the other side. But again, I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if Leatherman just thought, oh, it'll be fine. Or they really didn't notice, or none of the testers noticed. But it, it sits up maybe half a millimeter and you can you can feel it on there um, but again you know it, it's not something it's more of a um, an observation rather than a no this is this is a, this is a fail or, or anything like that then the other tools that are in here you have um, an awl which also has a hole so that you can use it for threads 
there is also a, a smaller flathead screwdriver and there is a larger flathead screwdriver. Each of these uses that spring um, detent here at the back, um, which you know holds them in place really well. And then the last thing, which is sometimes a bit of a pain, but it always comes out when I lift the file, is just in case you needed to, there is a little lanyard hole in there as well. Now, when I get to the things that I would possibly change about this, the glaringly obvious thing for me is, because this isn't a tr or at least for me, you know, I, I, I know I certainly keep saying this, for me, this isn't a tradesman's tool. This is a, uh, this is an EDC, this is, a, this is a, an enthusiast, a hobbyist's tool. Why are there no scissors on this? That's the bit, that's the bit, sorry about this, we just do keep coming out of focus there. That's the bit for me that I just don't get. Why are there no scissors on this? And I, I know I talk long and hard about, I use scissors more than I use any other tool on, on multi-tools, but I do find it astonishing that they couldn't fit some scissors onto this. If I'd have changed anything, I'd have made this flare on both sides. The reason that that flare, you know, as I mentioned, is that there, so that the the head of the pliers fits in, and it fits in snugly in and around these tools. If this flare had come out here longer, then I'm sure they could have fit in some scissors on one of those sides. I'd even have been happy to maybe lose one of these tools. We've got one large flathead screwdriver and one small head flathead screwdriver. The, the end of this flathead screwdriver is roughly the size of this. This could easily have just been used as a flathead screwdriver, took that one off there, maybe made this file smaller, and then had some scissors that, that go on the other side. I don't think it's a deal breaker, because I still think that this is a great tool. Again, for a hobbyist, for an enthusiast, or for an EDCer, but the decision for me not to include some scissors on here was a pretty was a pretty big thing for me, and I, I, I say this all the time. I don't see it as a negative because for me, you know, it's it's just something that I'd change. But for the next man or woman, they were like, oh, I don't really use scissors that much. Um, but yeah, it, it's just something that I wish had have been included in here. Now. Getting back to the look and feel of this, I think I still think it's a great tool, and I still think in this day and age, especially here in the UK, where we're certainly limited on whether or not you can have um, uh, lock knives as such, um, this doesn't have a lock knife, so having a slip joint on there certainly makes this a lot easier to be able to carry. Um, which is, is definitely a good thing. I certainly think that Leatherman are making maybe a few more um, a few more knives that are designed for the worldwide market rather than just predominantly for the US. Um, which again, you know, I, I certainly don't think that's a bad thing. These are designed, these are made and crafted, put together, everything. These are US made tools. Which, you know, it has a certain amount of clout to it. It, def it definitely does in, in this day and age. Um, but to be able to take those and being able to use them worldwide certainly makes this a, a, a massive, massive advantage. And definitely a reason why you should pick up the Bond. So there we have it, the Leatherman Bond. Now, I think Leatherman have made some good decisions, especially in regards to the price. Um... A lot of the Leatherman tools I've already mentioned, you know, here in the UK, if you're after a decent, 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 decent Leatherman tool, they tend to be around the £100 mark or more. Um, to be able to pick up a full-size Leatherman tool for around about the £50 mark, I think is great. I like some of the design decisions that they've made with this. Um, the fact that it kind of harkens back to the rebar, with the, their original tool. Um, but has you know a nicer modern finish to it. I, I certainly like that. There's some choices, scissors, 
I'm not gonna keep I'm not, I'm not gonna keep going on about it. I use scissors more than I use any other tool. Even sometimes with multi tools, I use them more than that I use knives. It seems a damn shame that they weren't included on this. The fact that they've been able to flare out the um, the sides more so on one side, why it wasn't done on the other side, so that they could fit that maybe some additional tools in there, um, I think is a real shame. However, I certainly don't think that that should put you off picking up a bond, mainly down to the the, the kind of the entrance price into this. Um, as this for me is more for a hobbyist or an enthusiast to have something that you can carry with you here in the UK and probably worldwide as well when you look at certain worldwide rules as far as what knives can be carried in certain areas even to go to the US there are certain states where a knife can't be locking uh, and can't be any longer than three inches to have something that is more accepted around the world I certainly think is a, is a great step for Leatherman and I certainly see that especially here in the UK that this will become a, a very very popular tool. Uh, now I'll leave some links in the description below, some of those will be affiliate links if you choose to use those links it's to no extra cost to you guys, I just get a small kickback to my channel so that I can continue to purchase stuff like this. Um, Full disclosure, this was purchased by me. I picked this up in the Christmas sales. Um, this hasn't been sent to me. Um, yeah, this was this was uh, Moreland and Money uh, that, that actually bought this. Um, I'll leave my social media links below so that you can check me out and some of Leatherman's social media links as well. But for now, as always, stay safe, stay Moorlander, and stay EDC. And, no, let's start again. Can you hear that? I hope you can hear that. That's an ice cream van outside. It is absolutely booking it down with rain. It's February, the middle of winter, and there's an ice cream van outside. This is definitely going at the end of this content. I have to start up it again. Thank you, Mr. Ice Cream Happy Van. Wait for him to leave. The joys of uh, filming. Here's my hand. I think he's gone. Stanley, come on, come sit down. Come on. He's a good boy. He's nearly there. Right, let's get back into it. Stay Moorlander and stay EDC. And that's a wrap! <laughs> oh, that's... That's handsome.